Hey, wave over there, Rosario. Hello. <laughs> 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 it is official. <laughs> Global Party 2017 Healing from the Inside Out is kicking off. And as I <laughs> we have the beautiful Rosario Langley in uh, London, Great Britain, England. Where in England exactly? I'm in the north, near, near Scotland. I'm in South Shields, which is on the coast. Yep. And we are going to be talking about laughing your way to abundance. <laughs> Not, <laughs> that's all you had to do. <laughs> and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we just thought we'd burst the out laughing, but no matter what we're saying to each other, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you realize that... Oh, you know what? Before I see, I'm already, I want to get right to the meat of the laughing. But, you know, in a party, we always have music. Okay. So music does help. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like to sing shower songs. And recently, and since I've started um, uh, writing comedy, uh, these songs have started coming to me. So now I'm singing these songs in the shower. And this is one of my favorites. It, uh, because I feel so, feel so fine. Yes, I feel so, feel so fine. In my body, yes, in my body, yes, in my body and mine. In my body, yes, in my body, yes, in my body and mind. I start a bit low there. <laughs> I can see that the showering view. So and imagine if you were feeling that song and with somebody else in the shower too, it could get a little like a little other whole other beat to it. <laughs> it could indeed. It could indeed. You could harmonize. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. When is it that you really discovered that you have this gift to share and allow us to feel that joy and sense of laughing our way to abundance? Well, it's it's been a gradual thing. It was, and then this this summer, I just suddenly, I was watching some comedians who talked of how they wrote every day. They wrote sketches and they worked together. And I was thinking, oh, I've been looking for a writing partner for years. I've tried with different people. And then I thought, okay, come on, let's use your higher self. <laughs> this is my writing buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got over it looking for a writing partner. And I started writing sketches. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it isn't about having a punchline. Right. It's about having things that, that make me smile. And, and sometimes they make me just laugh out loud. And I'm just really enjoying it. And I realize that I'm quite good at di um, distracting people and pivoting them out of a drama. So sometimes I'll just say something. And my, my mother said, oh, she said, you were so good with your father. He'd be really sort of wanting to get, he'd be starting to get annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, there's a bird. And wait, wait, and then there's suddenly, and it, it may not be a laugh out loud, but then, oh, yeah, that's a great, and you, you start smiling. And, and I realized that laughter is actually the same energy as abundance. And abundance because it means so many things mm -hmm. like this morning i um we were both saying how relaxed next we're excited about today yes but so different to the last global party because i got up and i thought right i really want to clean and i started cleaning last night and i just went around cleaning all the windows and it reminded me when i was in germany one of the guys, I uh, said, oh, gosh, look at this, where, where we were cleaning. It's really filthy. And he said, it's clean as gold. And I thought, oh, yes, dirt <laughs> clean as gold. <laughs> and whatever, you can have an abundance of anything. Um, and it's, it's just once you've got that feeling and laughter is that energy as well. I watched a program last night about some cleaners who are extreme cleaners because a lot of people have gathered a lot of clutter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And these were really extreme, you know, I mean, people who who couldn't even, they didn't, they couldn't get to be their beds, like they're sleeping in a, a like space. Like Is that what yeah. you mean? Like yeah, order. Order. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they can't, they can't get up the stairs yeah. or in the passage or anything. And these women said, we love, well, the men, the women, they said, we love our job because it just makes such a, it changes people's lives. And they just, they're laughing as they do it, even though they're working in quite horrible, with quite horrible stuff. Yeah. We can transform it. And I was thinking that as I was putting my compost out this morning, because I love taking my compost and watching it transform into something that actually grows, you know, vegetables and fruit and flowers. It's just brilliant. Isn't it? Like, I mean, to me, this is such an exciting time in the world because that's all that's happening is this great transformation, this healing from the inside out with you and I and everyone else on the planet. And when you can look at it in that sense of awe and laughter and joy, it just it's engaging and and everything your whole barometer your whole way you look at things changes because as you say you're you know you're taking compost and it's creating flowers and vegetables and and wow isn't that magic it is it's brilliant and I, what what's so great is earlier in the week because i'm i'm following my bliss i'm just and this i found quite challenging because sometimes it's I'm thinking, well, is this my, is this what I really want to do? Mm -hmm. uh, because I had people asking me to do different things and, and I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling it. And I just wanted to, you know, I spent three days mainly in bed or lounging on the sofa, just watching, watching programs. And I was enjoying, I felt quite content. Uh, but then... I was in bed watching a film on my phone. I like to snuggle up in bed. And I was making some chicken stock and I forgot about it. Right. I had chicken bones in the pan. Uh -huh. And then I just suddenly started to cough and I could smell something and I dashed through and the smoke alarm didn't go off much to my amazement because it's gone off. And for for far far less, you know, like when I've been doing toast or something, right? And and I opened the kitchen door, and I couldn't see in because of the smoke because the the chicken bones had cremated in the pan. <laughs> and so there's this really horrible smell, but I I just laughed and thought, well, actually, I'm more sensitive than the smoke alarm. <laughs> 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 well, well, that's a good point because I do, I do feel as the more aligned or harmonized we become with that sense of joy, and that we're abundantly connected to the universe, we are very sensitive. We're always guided, right? So yes. we rely on the cell phone to give us the message or the smoke alarm, but our body will always know what we really need to do when we really need to do it. Exactly, and I was thinking, you know. You, it's trusting your instinct and your your connection. Mm -hmm. And I thought, right, well, I want really want to. The smell was pretty awful. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I had all the windows open for uh, you know uh, thirty six hours, and it was still bad. I was washing down, and then I just thought, actually, I looked at making something to cure it, and the, I saw orange essential oil is good, yeah. and I thought. Yes, that is really great. Mm -hmm. And I just said to my friend, she has oil essences, but I realized that she didn't. She said, I've actually got some orange essence mm -hmm. half used that you can have. So now my place smells of orange essence. <laughs> and how does it get better than this? It's It's brilliant because if I hadn't burnt the bones, I wouldn't have of thought of putting S oil essence out. I've just been using ordinary cleaning materials. And uh, it's just the way things turn up. Oh, it, it, and I'm with you there on the, on the aromas because my youngest, one of her um, passions is to 
she's very well in nature. Anyway, so she's taking a short-term job at a cow farm. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so, like, in Sedgwood Island. Yes, yes. Oh, how rote <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My oldest is uh, is more sensitive to smell. So we have this balance of, okay, how do we leave the cow smell and change it into aromatherapy with essential oil? Yeah. <laughs> and and it creates a whole new ambiance of, of blending and recognizing what everybody's sensitive and experiences things differently. And instead of making one wrong, it's like embracing it and creating this beautiful, majestic tapestry of life. Yes. It, it is, and I've been feeling so abundant because of things like this. Like, that makes me feel so much richer than I was looking to see which were the best ones to buy. And right. then I gave them this gift. Uh, and she said, oh, I don't use it. You have it. You know, it's <laughs> half a bottle. <laughs> and and I was thinking, right, I really, yesterday, I really want to go and get some um I want to make banger. We have a, I don't know if you call it bangers and mash, sausage and potato yeah. mash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bangers and mash, okay. and I want to spring greens with it. <laughs> I just had this urge for spring greens. And I, I couldn't find the cabbage anywhere. And in the end, I could see all this white cabbage. And I thought, mm, yeah, that's okay, but that's not spring greens. And then, I found one packet, the last packet of spring greens hidden in a corner. And I was so elated because that was exactly what I wanted. And it was just what I felt I needed. And that's what makes me feel so abundant. And I was just laughing because it was, it was hidden away in the corner and it was the last one. It was really fresh. It was brilliant. <laughs> I, I was thinking of you yesterday as I had this sudden urge. It was a deep feeling, and I had to get up and head to the beach. And I had I had to um, become the sand. So I was literally burying myself in the sand. I was sand exfoliating. I was, like, oh. in the sand. And then I was in the ocean, and I was just, like, lying there making sand angels. <laughs> Brilliant. And it just – it just – that to me, the same as your is, is the abundance is being completely present to what really is because yeah. it is just, you said you didn't have to buy it. You were given it and people go, well, I can buy it. And it's like, it's great that you have money to buy it, but the real magic is when things show up out of the corner or someone gives it to you or they just materialize right before your eyes. Yeah. And I've been, the last couple of weeks, I haven't been going down to the beach so much, mm -hmm. but I feel I've been tuned in because we've had a lot of the northern lights here. And although it's been so cloudy and there's a lot of light where I am, mm -hmm. uh, I could feel it. And the sky was a very different color. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I was meant to be going, I am going to this, my friend organizes a skinny dip um, in, at this beautiful beach in Northumberland on the northeast coast at Druridge Bay. Okay. It's sunrise. Uh. And she has, I think there's four or 500 people go. I went for the first time last year. She'd been running it for five years. Uh -huh. And it was, it was so great. But the thing I didn't fancy was camping. It felt like a lot of organizing. Mm -hmm. and, and then I realized I'd double booked myself because I would got the opportunity to train at the marine lab with the, at the university and identify marine wildlife. And I booked that for Saturday. And I was thinking, oh, goodness, so what do I do? Because at the moment, I don't have a car. Right. So I just put last night, I just put a, a message on Facebook, on the, the Facebook page. Right. And a guy who lives just round the corner is giving me a lift. It's <laughs> just five in the morning on the Sunday. So I can sleep <laughs> in my own bed. I'm picked up at the door. I don't <laughs> rush around buying tent bags for my son's tent, which I was planning to borrow. How does it get better than this? I know. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's can... a joke. I love it. <laughs> I, I get 
get it. I get it. But I hear I can I can hear other people going. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why Why wouldn't you have a car? Why wouldn't you be or organized or or you know like all these things? And the issue is is when you leave your mind of how the world works and you open up to this joy of being present. It's like the universe just happens. It's a it's following your bliss and it all follows in alignment. And and that's the magic. And the awe, yeah. because you never know how, but you just know it will work. Yeah, and it just feels so good that I'm getting this lift. I'm being chauffeur-driven at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be wearing a leopard skin onesie? No, just it's a skinny dip. Yeah. We're all naked. <laughs> Okay, but, right. but when you get in the car. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I wasn't planning on taking car journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really must get a leopard skin onesie. I think it's becoming one of those essential <laughs> essential items, <laughs> wardrobe items. <laughs> I just had this vision of you. Here you were. You were getting picked up in your chauffeured car, as you said at five thirty. You know, it's like going on the red carpet. You could just have the have the jacket on. Yes, <laughs> the onesie. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, do you know what? Laughing is just great. I mean, you can feel these muscles. It just works differently. And yes, you do get maybe smile lines because of that, but it's just so relaxing on your face. I think they go away right after that. So you are heading off to New York soon. Yes, I am. I'm heading off on the 4th of October and um, I'm planning to actually do um, a stand-up comedy in, someone said, go to Washington Square. Mm -hmm. I said, that's where Bob Dylan started. And I thought, that's a great place because <laughs> I've been to Edinburgh Festival, mm -hmm. which is really good fun. And when I sang the I Feel So Fine song, mm -hmm. there were 20 people came up and joined in. Mm -hmm. And you know, young people, all ages, and they're just singing and dancing and tapping their feet along. And you're going, isn't this, isn't this great? This is wonderful. <laughs> And I, I'm hoping it will be better than my, I know it will be even easier than my last trip up to, um, in, in America. And I call this Passport 2. Because I had a little, I've got a little passport story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I, I remember this because I was reading about Jules Verne and I always wondered why his valet was called Passepartout. Uh, and I, I thought, it sounds a bit like passport. And then when I looked up the meaning, uh, the, it comes from the French, and it means a picture or photograph mounted between card or glass. Um, and it's, when I looked, it's something that passes, passes literally passes everywhere. From the 17th, I'm going to goosebumpy, the 17th century French, and it means literally passes everywhere. So, passport too passes everywhere. He can actually go wherever he chooses. And a passport, I mean, I've got my passport here ready because I'm, I'm sorting out my visa and things. And when I was in LA, I was going. I was at the American film market and I was flying up to see my daughter who was then in Seattle and she okay. just arrived to do her PhD mm -hmm. in there six weeks. And I thought, I've got, you know, I'm just down the coast. Right. <laughs> I've got to go and see her. So I got through check-in, customs, security, everything. Went to the toilet, came out. And I couldn't find my passport. Huh? And I thought, well, I had it. <laughs> right. I had it literally at the check through the, mm -hmm. uh, by the toilets. Mm -hmm. So I went to see if I'd left it there. And nobody wanted to know. And yeah. they said, no, it's not here. And that was it. And, and I said, uh, they said, oh, well, go and see if it's been handed in at the desk where your flight is. So I went to the flight desk. Yeah. And it hadn't. And I said, oh, I don't know what to do. 
And I said, I've no way of getting in touch with my daughter because as she just moved, she hadn't got a, a mobile phone mm -hmm. that worked in America. So she was literally meeting me off that flight. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't know her address because she'd just been moving that week. And she said, I'll just meet you. Yeah. They just said, well, it's an internal flight. So you don't need your passport to get there. And I just thought, okay, it means at least I can go. Step one. And this was it about letting go about how, how it was all going to pan out. I just thought, okay, step one, I can get to see my daughter. Mm -hmm. and so we got, I got there and she said, great, wonderful. And everybody was passing me on. So they all say, well, ask them at the other end. Right. So at the other end, I asked them. Nobody wanted to know. And I said, well, what do I do about getting back? And they said, oh, so for some reason, I don't know why I was able to go back without a passport. And I, 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 I can't remember how I did it, but it just, nobody seemed to, it was all okay. It was just, I was, I was literally being passport to, I was passing everywhere <laughs> without the passport. And so I had a great time with my daughter and came back and I'd been staying in a five star hotel right, when right. I the film market. And I was going for a couple of days to a, a screenwriting festival. Mm -hmm. uh, but my budget by now was um, meant I was staying at the youth hostel. <laughs> so I was in this international youth hostel and I was in a, a, a dormitory that they double booked me. I'd, I'd booked an individual room okay. and they double okay. booked me. And so I ended up sharing with this amazing German couple who were cycling around the world. They'd cycled from Alaska to LA. Uh, how does it get better than this? <laughs> and before I met them, I thought, well, I'd better put my bag in the locker. And as I put it in the locker, and I'd been, I'd spent the time, I'd spent the whole day going to the consulate, going to the embassy, arranging for a temporary passport mm -hmm. and all this. And I went, I even went to the LAPD. I thought, how cool, I'm at, I'm at the LAPD. And they didn't want to know either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when you've seen all the police departments yeah, on TV, and I just thought, great, here I am in the LAPD with my lost passport. And they just said, no, go to the embassy. <laughs> and they were really excited at the embassy because I was at the film market. And they, so they were, were giving me lots of contacts. Mm -hmm. They were giving me connections and say, all right, when you come, next time you come over, we'll arrange a sort of a, 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 a we'll arrange a get together and invite the all the people and i was like really <laughs> we'll set something up at the cons consulate and i was great and i would never have had that happen if i hadn't lost my passport yeah, yeah. and then when i got back to the hostel with my temporary paper passport and i would paid for the new one to come through mm -hmm. <laughs> i put tip my bag up and it's a laptop bag that I was using as a suitcase. <laughs> and okay, the passport. Okay, the passport. It was it, <laughs> it slipped in between because the case can unzip off the bag, and it slipped between the bag and the and the wheels, and it had, and it had lasted all that journey up to Seattle and back. <laughs> so, this was my little passport to adventure. <laughs> And if it hadn't happened, you wouldn't have got the the connection the connect at the end, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. Trusting it and enjoying the process. That's the beauty of life, right? Really being in that sense of that abundance and just trusting. See, if, you, if everybody just had your attitude, this looking at life with that sense of joy, that word stress would be eliminated from our vocabulary because I think it when you're if you're stressing you don't you're not open to the opportunities and the signs right. and when you when you just relax and allow it to happen it just you know and um, it was the same going to see my daughter because that was a gift because 
I'd had an investor who suddenly said, okay, this just sounds too important that you go out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I got funding within two weeks. I, I, I attracted funding to, to go out there from my screen agency, from an investor. And it was just like easy peasy. So what words of wisdom would you share when somebody is just that? They're feeling stressed, right? I mean, they might want to turn on the comedy channel, but they're in the middle of their life, whether that's at work or in in just out and about. What do they do to allow that laughing, their way to abundance to show up? Yeah, and it, it's not about you don't necessarily have to co- go into laughing out loud. Okay. Just go for, aim for that better feeling thought. Just go for go for something that says like when I was in bed and uh, I had my uh, my cremated chicken bones. I was just thinking, oh, it was good that I smelt it before the, the smoke alarm, and it was good that I have. A sensitive nose and then I have a smoke alarm because oh well, you know it's fine nobody's hurt it's just my room stinks <laughs> my home stinks right. <laughs> and you know th- go for that better feeling thought and ap- I, ap- I was appreciating how I'd found out about the the uh, the pan boiling dry right. and now I'm appreciating the pan boiling dry because it's attracted um, it's attracted sort of a gift of, of orange oil, you know, things like this. Yeah. Another because sometimes I find that I'm beating myself up when I just want to be in bed and just lie there and just do nothing. And when I'm thinking, I had two people wanting me to write. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I should, I should. And I mm-hmm. thought, time isn't right. right. It doesn't feel right. I just want to be here right now. And I know that when I start to write, it will just pour in. And it made, I actually started to do this when I was, had a family. Mm-hmm. And I was, I had a very busy job. I had a, I, I, and my son and daughter were quite young. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was full on. But I would still, that was when I learned to take care of myself by saying, well, actually, all I want to do is do a meditation and um, and relax. Mm-hmm. And I knew I had a meeting, say, at 10 o'clock, so I'd just ring up to see if the meeting was still on. But, but my, my intention was I really want to meditate. And I'd ring up. And the meeting would have, oh, so-and-so has been called away. There's no meeting. I said, that's fine. I'll work from home. Right. And it's it's allowing the universe, putting out what you want, mm-hmm. first, first and foremost, and laughing at yourself. I laugh at myself more than anything. Yeah. Because it's just, that's the best thing. Just laugh at yourself. And, and it's not a, a laughing like how... It's just an appreciation for the quirks and the quirks and the little intricacies of life, right? It's not a a laughing at you like sort of thing that people think, oh, don't laugh at me. It's kind of you're laughing with yourself. You're laughing with yourself. Yeah. That's perfect. Yes, you're laughing with yourself. It's not like saying, I, I catch myself doing something. I go, well, I created that. It's like, oh, I created the boiled bones. And, but it didn't make me feel down at all. I just felt okay. <laughs> so it's happened. Yeah. Well, and I just laugh with myself at it. I love that phrase. Thank you. <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Well, I know the other night I had a friend who um, had had hurt his uh, had a sore back. Let's just say that. And so I I went to get him some arnica. And and I'm not a big TV watcher anymore. Uh, but friends and Seinfeld, no, not friends, Seinfeld, friends and Seinfeld, see, they all went together way back when, when I used to watch it, and he had Seinfeld on, and it was an old episode that I totally knew the other, <laughs> and, and I was just, I was like laughing out loud that I more laughed, laughed at this than I ever had, because it was like, I, it was just, I know this one, this is so funny, and, yeah. and it just felt so good, and he's like, just sort of looking at me, is it really that funny, and I'm like, <laughs> 
I'm laughing at me laughing. I'm la I'm laughing with me, and he's wondering what it really is. So funny. Yeah, and sometimes it's when you know what's coming, and you're in that that abundant mood, you, you just can't stop yourself. And you don't need to stop yourself. You just allow yourself to enjoy it. Yeah, and that's what I wish for everybody is that they can open up to that sense of joy because when you're joyful, your body, everything resonates, you feel better, you appreciate life, you're going skinny dipping with four or five hundred people being chauffeured there. Yes. <laughs> and, and life is just great. Okay, isn't isn't okay, so I, I'm here on the Atlantic Ocean and you're a little further north. So how cold is it when you dive into that water? I don't even look at the temperature. <laughs> it is pretty cold and I've not been in the water this summer. Okay. But but what what are the odds? I live in a community um where everyone here is over 60 mm -hmm. and one of the guys in the corner he and his wife take it in turns to walk their dog around and their dog is very old and she's right. she's slowing down mm -hmm. and i got talking to him and it turns out he's in the he's he's a swimming coach okay. and he said, i'm getting back into it again and he's trained olympic olympic swimmers oh, wow and i said well I started, you know, I like swimming in the sea. I really enjoy that. But I haven't I haven't been in since I moved here because I'd like someone to go with, you know, to be there with rather yeah. than just going on my own. And he said, oh, well, there's a guy on the same street as us who does wide water swimming. And I actually m managed to see him yesterday. And he seems very quirky because in his garden he's got funny little gnomes and statues and he's got one that's like a globe with false teeth in. <laughs> and I went to see him and said, you know, are you in a group? And he said, no, it's just a few mates. And he said, but you're welcome to join us. And I said, well, I just, go. he said, I, you, you've obviously got a wetsuit. And I said, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like to feel, I actually like to feel the water on my skin. And I said, I know, you know, I've just been going in and doing 10 minutes, you know, maybe 10 strokes or whatever, depending on how cold it is. And he said, oh, we swim around the bay, <laughs> around to the piers. And I said, okay, okay. You know, they do two or three miles. And I said, right. But, and he said, but he said, if you, when the conditions aren't suitable for that, we swim in the bay. So you're welcome to come down. And you do your thing while we swim in the bay. So I've got some swimming buddies. <laughs> and, and maybe you need a leopard skin onesie wetsuit. That, that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> I may build up to a wetsuit, but I love the and my friend who organizes this skinny dip, mm -hmm. uh, she she's organizing it for mind, um, the mental health charity. Right. Because the, 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 it's like anything, the, the cold actually sort of invigorates you and stimulates you. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it helps you be healthier and it also helps your digestion. But also, whenever we've done it, we just end up laughing like mad because it's so mad to do this, but it's so fun. Absolutely. It's fun. So what and, day is this big, big dip? It's on Sunday at sunrise, okay. uh, which is about, um, about quarter to seven, I think. So we're setting off at half past five to drive. It's about, about an hour's drive from here. Beautiful. But I, uh, I've never seen 500 people strip so fast because literally you get there and everybody's in their woolly hats and their scarves and their jumpers and, and then we get the countdown and then it's like, in. <laughs> and while we've been on, my friend said, "Great, um, her mother's coming as well." So uh, her mother is younger than me, but I'm actually friends with her daughter <laughs> because I, I met her, this woman through her daughter. So it, it's like age doesn't matter. Yeah. No. Um, 
this is this is like if you catch anything from this conversation is that life is joyful and when you can appreciate it and be present to all that you're gifted with and all that really is a blessing and look to see the silver lining the glass half full be present to what comes through you you are laughing and giggling at everyday experiences just like rosaria and we're gonna we're gonna carry on this sort of conversation. We're gonna get together um, once a month. Next Wednesday, we're gonna have 11 a.m. Um, England time, 7 a.m. Atlantic the same this time. time. The same time zone. That's the way to do it. So um, more great stories just to share and just be present today and see what joy you have and comment. Let us know what what opened up for you today as you are laughing your way to abundance. Great. Well, have fun. I mean, I love I love the Abraham Hicks quote logo, which is life is supposed to be fun, and that was a big, big light bulb moment for me. <laughs> so, have a fabulous, fabulous party. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See you. Bye.